Skull and welcome my friends, I'm Haratrak and we are playing Expeditions Viking on insane difficulty. We're playing the release build, it's going to release um, on the 27th and we're playing as Thorgrim Ragnarsson. In the last episode we fought off a Northman raid and prior to that we meted out some justice to um, one of the farmers that sicked his son on us um, during the funeral for our father. And we also had a duel for the title of Thane with our now Haskell, um, at that time pretender for the title of Thane. So um, uh, we had just um, fought off the leader of the Northmen that raided our village. And they'd gone into the longhouse to plunder it. Came out with their bags of silver and stuff and then we engaged them. Uh, we've captured their leader. He surrendered, um, Gunnar. And now we're gonna in gonna go inside and see uh, um, how our mother and our brother are. Let's just see if they are hurt. Looks like they're okay. Hello. Rurik cracks the door open, holding a knife behind his back. Seeing your face, he steps away from the door to let you in. Um, by the way, I've changed the beard to actually match um, the beard of our of our guy in here. Um, I mean, his beard is a little bit more magnificent, but I guess that's just artistic. Um, detail. <laughs> I wonder how he, how he gets it so bushy. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Rurik lets us in. You're alive. No, oh, we're gaining 10 skill points. That's a lot. Nice. Hello. Your mother grasps both your arms as though to make sure they're still firmly attached. And you're in one piece. Oh, thank the spirits. It's over. We beat the raid. Nah, I'm gonna ask about them. Are you both unscathed? I'm not uh, uncouth. We're fine. Two of those brutes came in here and pilfered the silverware, but they didn't harm us. Um, I'm sorry, I should have been here to protect you. Rorik shakes his head and drops his knife on the floor in disgust. You wouldn't have had to if I were a stronger man. Your mother puts a hand on Rorik's shoulder and he places his hand on hers. Don't trouble yourself. Tell me, what happened outside? Is everyone safe? We beat the raiders and we've captured their leader. <laughs> Astrid pulls you into a warm embrace. I'm so proud of you. You truly are your father's son. Something is amiss. Why were the beacons not lit in warning? And the timing is so very convenient for our enemies. Perhaps we should talk to the giant, now that he's at our mercy. He let them here. He must be able to tell us why. See what you can find out. I have Rurik here to help me clean up the mess. Alrighty, so let's go and interrogate Gunnar. Let's just move out. Um, yeah, sustaining injuries does not put Herbman out of action, but they will incur penalties in and out of combat. Speaking of that, I actually took um, not only a uh, puncture to the leg, which was fair, because that um, I did uh, in that battle I did pretty badly, um, but I also took a, a light head fracture, which I think was unjustified because my swipe actually did not hit the second guy even though it should have and thereby taking both of them out um, didn't happen so they managed to down my down me and now we're actually missing three cents from that um, from that injury which is pretty bad I could have I would have hoped that uh, that would not be the case I've actually been thinking about going back and sort of replaying that bit to get rid of it because having the lowered sense is actually going to prevent us from getting some bits of dialogue that I would have liked to to see um, but on the other hand I mean this is sort of emergent gameplay we, we got the injury we got a fractured head and that means we can't think quite as well um, it's just how it goes um, I've also tried to get rid of the injury by um, going to the witch um, in the bog, but she's not here yet. So, and we can't also not we can also not leave Skjern to heal our guys up, um, go outside to camp. So, I guess that's just it. I guess I have to live with the fact that um, I'm injured and I won't get to see that dialogue, at least not in this run. All right, loading is taking taking a while. If this um, keeps up, we'll actually have to try and um, cut out those loading times. I mean, I can try to sort of talk about what is happening. And we're outside. Okay, so that's good. We're gonna interrogate Gunnar now. So let's do that. I'm um, just gonna show you first what I what I mean. So we got the minus three cents, um, which reduces it to seven, which is not enough to get the hard um, sense. Um, check past and we also have the light puncture which reduces our uh, which reduces our movement speed over here um yeah that's 
all in all, that's not great. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame. Uh, and I have no way to cure that. I've just got to interrogate the guy now. What do you have to say? Hello. So you beat Aslifer, did you? That's impressive. I must admit, I thought he could, he'd win. Ah, but I'm just glad to see you both alive and well. Can you repair my damaged equipment? What? He's gonna ask money for it? This vendor has fair prices. Yeah, this is a repairing menu. This may be only simple, be the only simple menu in the game. Savor it. Here you'll be able to select the weapons you want to repair during a shift. <laughs> all right. No, I think we're just gonna repair our things ourselves. I can't spend all my valuables to repair some crap. So no, thank you. Is everything well with you in the smithy? Depending on what you need me to do, yes. I have everything I need to make carving knives, repair bristles, or fix slave collars. If you need weapons or armor, you'll have to find a better equipped smith. Old Hana in the Reba has a fine smithy. He should be able to handle any requests you might have. Could you make weapons or armor if I get you the equipment you need? I could. It's not my skill that holds me back, it's the tools. Um, I need some equipment from you. Okay, what does he have? He can actually craft stuff. Interesting. Axe. Let's see if we can make a Dane Axe. Um, wood Dane Axe. Yeah, that's not something that I want. I've actually not uh, been doing the crafting uh, because that was not in the Let's Try build and the in the preview build. Convert salvage into weapons or hides into armor. Crafting skills of the herbman who's crafting. The skill rank determines the maximum item tier you can build, which in turn determines the total resource cap for each type of weapon. So we can do this all auto autonomously. Start by selecting which type of item you want. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. We got the Dane Uh We don't have enough salvaged stuff, though. Nah, I guess that's fine. Special property chance. 25% chance. I wonder if you get that if you actually um, craft on your own. So about this weather, huh? Yes, the frost has lasted very long this year. This time, last year, the snowdrops had already started sprouting. At least the forge keeps me warm, so my work isn't impaired much. I'll talk later. All right. Well, Smith is a very important person in the um, in the village. Let's talk with Gunnar the Peaceful now. Golden Dark, Dogrim. Good day to you. Someone has tied Gunnar to the pole in the middle of an animal pen. He must have been standing in the mud for at least three hours, yet he stands straight and looks you in the eyes when you approach him. Not so boisterous now, are you? <laughs> Gunnar smiles. I can't fault you for gloating. You've earned that right. <laughs> the huge man pauses for a moment to adjust his weight against the pole. We didn't have a chance to get properly introduced. I'm called Gunnar the Peaceful. I'm an wolf head in from Westfold in the north. I assume you are the thane of this village? I'm Thogrim, son of Ragnar, and I'm indeed the thane here. Tell me, Thogrim, son of Ragnar, why am I still alive? Um, could I ask him what an wolf head in is? It doesn't have any downsides. Uh, we are the chosen warriors of Odin. We go into battle with no coats of armor. Coat of armor. Instead, we wear wolf pelts and become mad as beasts. You're honored to be under Odin's protection. Well, I think we are kind of a... Although we have a lot of sense. But still, I think we are kind of a... Kind of a believer, I think. You're honored to be under Odin's protection. Guided by the wrath of the Allfather. Oh yeah, my skeptical followers have lost morale. That's a shame. Guided by the wrath of the Allfather, I've slain many men. Neither fire nor iron has any effect on me. It's a powerful pact. Tell me why you attack my village, or we'll run you through where you stand. You would execute an unarmed prisoner. Um, I gotta keep up my threat. I'm not sure if I would actually strike him down now that he's surrendered. Without hesitation, though. Ha! I admire your resolve. Very well. Your defenses are weak. No palisades. The barest excuse for earthworks. You're a tempting target. You want me to believe you sailed from Kaupang to steal my mother's jewelry? Giant shrugs, a motion not unlike an oak bending in a gale. Your village lies along a major trade route. I assumed you would be wealthy. How is it the be beacons weren't lit? Perhaps the watchmen were doing a shit job of keeping watch. In their defense, we were being very quiet. What is your relationship to the thane school of Skull Cleaver? Gunnar's expression remains totally blank. Never heard of the man. 
See some big deal down here? As you know, I'm not exactly from these parts. So now we can go for the sense check. And since we have a head fracture and have a very difficult time thinking, I can't actually pass that one, I don't think, because it's really hard. Enough playing around. Here's what I believe happened. We're going to attempt it nonetheless and see how we fail. Oh, I succeeded. <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't think that would work. Nice. Okay. You lay out the evidence as you see it. I really am surprised that that worked. I guess there must be a percentage worked in. Because I've been trying that um, in other runs with seven um, cents and it didn't work. Um, I guess a higher thing so, sort of ensures that it works. Hmm. You lay out the evidence as you see it. Gunnar's attack came at an all too convenient time when your clan was recently weakened by the death of your father. You must have been put up to it. The beacons weren't lit despite clear weather. Someone must have kept the watchman from their duty. Gunnar's ship would have passed within range of three beacons to the north, all within Yelling territory. Skule the Thane of Yelling is known to have strong ties to the northmen in general and Kaupang in particular. And Skule clearly has designs on your territory. As you lay out the facts, Gunnar's face falls into increasingly deep frown. At the mention of Skule, he slumps visibly. You are far more shrewd than anyone has given you credit for. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can outsmart these guys even with a, fret a fractured skull. <laughs> nice. It is true. Skule Skull Cleaver put me up to this. We met on Orkneyar. And he swore your village was worth was a worthwhile target, wealthier than the painted ones, and far less fierce. He was either lying or mistaken. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask these things. What is Orknaya? Um A smile creeps across Gunnar's lips, and he leans forward slightly. You've heard stories of the islands to the west across the sea. Orknayar are the northernmost of these islands. Many Northmen have come to take land from the tribes that live there. There are stories of a great kingdom to the south, with great concentrations of wealth and little in the way of defenses. We never made it that far south. Perhaps I will return to those islands and explore further in the future. Who are the painted ones? Must be Picts. They are the tribes who live in the north on the isles across the sea. They are called the Picts. Their weapons are poor and their homes are primitive by our standards, but they fight fiercely and they live in harsh conditions. It's actually not true that their weapons are poor. I'm pretty sure that they use crossbows do even during these times, which is very early for, for crossbows. All in all, they're not worthwhile, not a worthwhile target for raids, but their lands are fertile. So far, we've been able to keep them in check. Okay. I'll discuss these findings with my confidants. We'll talk again later. Giant size. I'll enjoy. You. I'll continue to enjoy your hospitality until you, you until you return. Ha! Huh. All right, let's have a talk. Let's see how this goes. I should have seen the connection. Yeah, Thane Schooly mentioned his ties to Kaupung at the feast, and here's a group of Northmen attacking us out of the blue. What does he stand to gain from this? Um, he must intend to weaken us ahead of the next other thing. Do you believe he's really been to the Isles across the sea? And Gunnar as well? Could be. He said they crossed far to the north and found only tribes, but if the stories of larger kingdoms to the south are true, perhaps that's where Ragnar went. Mm. Hmm. Yeah... Um. I doubt we should really repeat the mistakes here. Let's not get carried away by fancy for stories of unprotected coasts full of treasure. I won't make the same mistake as my father. Ask life or not, satisfied. That's wise of you. I would it would be disastrous for the clan to lose our new thane so soon after the last. We should take this to Astrid and hear what she thinks. Right. She knows Skule a lot better than we do. Okay, let's do this. Let's go for a quick save. Um, yeah, he, School of Skullcleaver was far too friendly. And then he six these Northmen on us. The bastard. <laughs> and he must have done that already when he came to the funeral. Which is interesting, I think. Um, because, I mean... That's only three days since the funeral when he was here. 
and Orkneyar is quite a bit away, so he couldn't have gone there, met Gunnar, then um, sailed away again. Although, I mean, he could have sailed to Orkneyar directly from the funeral. I don't think that you can really make that journey in three days, though. I mean, if you have good winds, possibly. Um, maybe I should like, look that up on a map, um, plot out if that is a possibility. Let's see what Ostler has to say. Did the man talk? What did you find out? Thane Schooler has been to the islands across the sea. He recruited a northman there. He's behind this. He's been working against us for months. Yeah, that is my impression. He's been planning this for a while. School is the cause? Then it's worse than I thought. How? The northman has started settling in the hours across the sea. Schooler met the raiders there and convinced them we were easy pickings. And we were. This raid was our own fault. Our defenses are inadequate. We'll deal with that later. If Skuda is acting against us, do you know what that means? He'll try to get control of our clan from Sigurd the Hringer at the next outing. That must be his ultimate plan, yes. This gives him almost a year to weaken us further in the eyes of the king, and nobody will help us against him. As she speaks, Astrid counts on her fingers. He holds great favor with the king, so we can expect no political protection. Further, Yelling is a large territory with many fine warriors, so we can't possibly face him in battle. Third, he all but controls trade with Kaupang, a road so profitable as to rival the trade from Saxony through Ribe. We have almost a year until the next outing. There must be something we can do. Um, I'm not gonna give in. Mm. Um, I guess we gotta cross the sea and plunder that unprotected coast I've heard so much about. Um, aggressive followers have gained morale, greedy followers have gained morale, peaceful followers have lost morale. Okay. Everyone stops to consider the implications. Dark looks are exchanged, heavy with doubts and worry, but nobody appears able to come up with a compelling alternative. Finally, your mother sighs. I see no other option. Your first act as Thane will be to leave your clan just like your father. Nephia rolls her eyes so hard at us, life we can almost hear them strain in their sockets. Do you have anything to contribute other than more complaints about Ragnar? Do you have anything, uh, any rebuttal to offer better than N uh <laughs> I know you're sworn to serve Thorgrim, but if you're so afraid to leave, I'm sure you can convince your thane to let you stay. Aslife crosses his arms and shifts his weight impatiently. I'll follow if so ordered. In fact, I'll be glad to go. However, our duties lie here, with the clan. There won't be a clan much longer if we don't do something to counter Schooler. I think about the battle we might find across the sea. The treasure! The battles! Um, we're going to save the clan, dude. I may not agree with your decision, but I respect your reasoning. I'm with you. Then we must begin to make the preparations immediately. We have two months until spring. You'll need a new ship and a real herd to crew it. Your huskals alone won't be enough. We need cargo to trade. If trade is what we're planning. <laughs> um, there are few fighting men left in the clan. We must leave some to protect the village. Maybe we should consider asking Gunnar to join us. Are you mad? That is mad, but it might not be a bad idea. You saw him fight. We want a man like that on our side. But can we trust him? He's a brute, but if he'll swear fealty, he'll be our brute. Considering his present situation, I'm sure he can be won over. We'll give him a chance, but we need more crew than him. My conceited followers have lost morale. Okay, guess they think that guy is beneath us. You'll need at least a crew of ten for a longship. If you'll take my advice on this, go to the market in Ribe and make your plans public. Many have heard the stories of that bountiful coast. You should find no shortage of volunteers. We should ask um, Torfin, our, our carpenter, if he's up to the task of building a longship. If I know Torfin at all, he's been dreaming of such a task for a long time. I do not intend to do any trading. <laughs> We're gonna go raiding with the Danax. We should still stock up on supplies for the journey. I think I have an idea for how we might afford it. Nephew rubs the bridge of her nose. I'm sure I know what you're going to suggest. 
Remember Aedis told us about the ancient grave on Funen, where they say a king and a queen were buried with all their wealth. The shield maiden smiles. I knew it. If that's true, we could sell the loot and fill the whole ship with cargo. If that story were true, the grave would have been robbed generations ago. Let's at least talk to Aedis about it and ask what she thinks. It's worth looking into. My greedy followers have gained morale, that's nice. It does sound whimsical, but Aedis is wise and well-grounded. Talking to her wouldn't hurt. Good, got a plan. Then begin the preparations, my son. I'll start pulling some strings so we can learn more about Skula's activities and plans. I'll hate to see you leave, but I know you'll do your father proud. Your brother and I will watch over the clan in your absence. And we received another five skill points. We must have a lot of them by now. Yeah, I have 17 skill points, which is pretty nifty. Um, I'm actually not about to invest them right now. Got a bunch of skill points that we could that we could go for. Reba has revealed, been revealed on the map. Reach a way marker. We've got a new quest. I'm going to track that one. Because that's the one that we're going to go for right now. Um, we've got to prepare for the raiding that tomb. We've got to build a longship. Um, plot thickens finishes. Okay, so we're done with that one. Right, um, let's save it. Let's talk to our brother. Let's see what he has to say. I'm pretty sure he's actually stricken with guilt. Rory greets you with a smile as always, but it's not reflected in his eyes. How's it going, brother? Mm. You seem a bit dour since the raid. Your brother holds your gaze for a moment. Then he lets out a long breath. I know you said I acted correctly, but it just doesn't feel that way. I remember that failure whenever my mind is idle. I can't help it. I keep reliving the helplessness I felt. I see the way the others look at me. They say nothing, but they think I'm weak, unmanly. They're right. A man who can't protect his family is no man at all. Mm. Don't know. Don't know. I, I mean, the brothers like each other. Mm. And if I were to stay around, I might actually go for this. But since we're gonna go to England and we might not be here, it might actually be good for him to actually, yeah, man up. It's it's an odd concept, but um, during this time and age, if you can't at least defend yourself, you might actually go um, down a very bad hole. <laughs> Become a man. I've always been here to protect you when Ragnar was away. Now you must learn to protect mother when I leave. I'm no warrior. You always took it so easily. Took to it so easily. Watching you and nephew train, it's like a dance. That's why you're the Thane instead of me. Mm. Nobody is born to fight. It's something we'll learn out of necessity. Stop sitting on your hands and wallowing in self-pity. Pick up a sword and train. His back straightens, as if by your words you've pulled him up by the shoulders. You're right. I'll be a better man. I'll make myself a better man. I can use this failure, turn it into motivation. I mean, I need him. <laughs> uh, I've been looking at this all wrong. Thank you, little brother. I'll think on this. Yo, I think we did some good there. Um, what was that? First sword your father forged. It's not a great weapon, but it's not bad. At f not not a bad first effort. Interesting. Um, herbs, rations, hides. Very good. We need hides to craft armor. Leftovers from the feast, feast still bubble merrily over the fireplace. This stew will last for months if you treat it well. It's pretty nice that that actually changed that description, um, depending on what step of uh, the quest you're in. Just gonna loot everything here because we're gonna need everything on the insane difficulty. Um, all right, let's try and um, go and um, hire Gunnar, actually. I'm actually really happy that the sense check worked. <laughs> that is something that um, I'm supremely happy about. Didn't think it would work, but we definitely have to, to treat our injuries um, in some form or fashion. Um, maybe I can convince the witch to actually do something for me. Because um, we've got a witch in our bog. It's taking a while to load. Mm. 
Yeah, I actually haven't decided if we're gonna go for trading or raiding, but our guy with his big Danex, I mean, he has a lot of sense. I mean, I guess trading is, is gonna bring more worth in the long run than raiding. Um, but raiding could give us that that short-term boost that we need over there um, to, to stand up to Skule. Um, I don't think we're really going to go for a long-term goal. We're just going to try to get enough of a cash injection um, to build up our defenses and our people and to have a chance to stay an independent clan instead of being taken over. And you can see these guys in the picture already getting ready for a nice little raid. <laughs> You can see that they're actually not moving inside friendly waters because they got their, their dragon head attached and um, they actually take them off um, if they are in friendly waters so as not to scare off the ghosts of the land. These were detachable and since they have it on, they are in a full war move. I wanna join you. The witch's apprentice accosts you outside of your longhouse. So we got the Rasqua the Black. Hello. Why do you wish to join? She scratches her wrist. Um, do I really need a reason? Mm. Mm, kind of, kind of. The village needs the healer. Yes. It's just time to leave, you know? She scratches her wrist. I owe a lot to old Holder, but I've learned all I can from her, and I still don't know enough. I heard it's a big world out there. Will it be a dangerous trip? You'll have to contribute. Well, do you think there's a small chance some of you might get hurt on this really dangerous trip? You know these herbs aren't just for making people sick, right? Holder trained you as a healer. Of course, that's what witches do, you know. Sure, I'll be glad to have you on board. She smiles, and it's a proper smile for once, showing teeth and everything. Thank you. I'll find someone to take care of Holder while we're gone. Alright, so we got Rosqua, our new guy, and yeah, you can see that Gunnar is actually bugged. Um, I've uh, contacted the developer. Gunnar shouldn't be out here uh, with an attack thing. He should be where we left him and where the quest marker is actually showing us um, that he would be. Um, so, but we can get around this. Um, I'm actually going to use a console command to make this right. Um, so what we're going to do is open the console and we're going to force him. Um, the developers have said that they found the bugs and f uh, found the bug and have fixed it um, for the day one patch. But since this is the the press um, review preview build, um, it's not in there yet. So we've got to do it like this. All right, Gunna is still where you left him. Uh, well, he isn't actually. <laughs> A hog is curiously sniffing his pants. Good to see you again. Have you decided what to do with me? Hmm. <laughs> Could be a real dick. I have an offer for you. I want you to join my herd. I need my own Luca Brasi. I accept. I didn't expect this to be so easy. Ha! Why would I reject such an offer? You showed remarkable prowess in defeating my men. I would love to fight by your side. Kettle cuts Gunnar's ropes. We'll find you a place to stay. For now, we can at least get you out of this pig pen. The old fat in stretches, squeezes his wrists to get the blood flowing again, then puts out a huge hand to seal the deal. I swear before Odin to follow you wherever you ask and serve you with my life. Yeah, he's our brood now. <laughs> That's nice. Um, yeah, my clansmen are not too happy that I actually recruited the, um, the raider that attacked us. I'm now only loved. But I guess I can't live with being loved um so the motley herd has been updated i'm really glad that we that we still get him um because he's actually quite a, a nice fighter let's just have a look at him um let's have a look at the equipment first so he actually brings yeah i'm actually not sure if we are supposed to get that the hardened male a shirt of interlocking iron rings offers excellent protection against all weapons but the coat is quite heavy and significantly restricts movement this could be a bug i'm not sure i mean here yeah, it does have some finish weapons he got a bearded axe and a tool axe and a wood dane axe so he can sort of run the same build that i'm running question is should i really leave that with him that does 49 percent damage melee reduction 60 percent ranged what does mine do 
36 and 20 range. So I would definitely be better protected with that thing. The thing is, we're sort of trying to charge into battle. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually doing something else here. He's got the 9%, 30%. I'm going to take that hard mail armor for myself. Sorry, Gunnar. That's just how it goes. Although it is going to reduce my charge. It might not be a good idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give it to him. Um, Aslifer. Because he's going to be he's going to be our real tank. He's going to stand in the front line trying to take the the hits. Um, and then Roskwa, she has... Oh, she has a talisman. Has carried this foxbone talisman as long as she remembers. Um, Hulda always claimed it was made by Roskwa's father. Plus one morale. That's nice. Um, she has a lot of sense. A um, lot of perception, a lot of finesse. I think a bow, a bow would actually be a fine thing. Oh, she has a sling. May not be an elegant weapon, but a stone to the face at high speed will get the job done more often than not. I could give her a bow. 7 to 10. Oh, let's switch that. Let's see what that does. Um, does more armor piercing, yeah, that's for sure. She's very weak, though. She only has one strength, so... Yeah. Do I, don't I have another bow? I don't, apparently. Well, we're going to give her the bow, then. Um, where is it? Come on. Willow bow. Have it. And then she also has a knife. Or a nifr. Yeah, let's, let's put her on bow duty um, for the time being. Um, and then she has just a, a basic shirt. And uh, he still has a fair amount of damage reduction, actually. Um, let's have a look at the skill. So, Rasquash has um, two in knife. Oh, she's actually skilled in slings. Hmm. I'd rather build her out as a bowman. I'm not sure if slings are really a good thing. What do they do? Puffball. Launches mushroom that explodes into a cloud of dust spores that covers the target hex and all... Adjacent hexes for one turn, treating them as full cover for purposes of ranged attacks. Ooh, nice! So that allows us to change the lay of the battlefield. More sling accuracy, scatter shot. Any character within a two hex arc at a six hex distance or less have 75% chance to be harried. 50% um, chance to be blinded, 25% chance to be concussed. The attack deals no damage though. Within a 2-hex arc at a 6-hex distance. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, okay, she's going to keep her sling. I mean, it's not a bad a, a bad thing to have um, a couple of different skills um, and uh, in different weapons because then loot will become more valuable if everyone just uses a sword. You will be sorely pressed to get everyone a great sword, I think. She's cunning, superstitious, so she believes in the god. She's greedy and independent. Okay, and he's aggressive, open-minded, greedy, and optimistic. She does have the healing, which is good. Um, she has the interrupt, which is fine. Yeah, I think I'm going to give her back her sling. I think it is the better weapon. Nice. And I think we're going to start her out with that. So that's fine. Um, so, slings, knives. What does the final thing do? Launches a bladder which spreads oil across the target hex and all adjacent hexes. Any occupying character gets the status effect flammable. Burning will last twice as long. Nice. Because I think um, the cattle, if I level up his arrow ability, he'll actually get yeah the fire arrow. Um, applying the status effect burning to anyone in the hex can also target flammable objects such as haystacks. Or people with oil. So I think these guys are going to combo rather well. I like that, I gotta say. Um, okay. Uh, do you have anything else? Um, you got the this skill. You got the healing skill. You also have the witchcraft skill. Governed by sense. Converts herbs into medicine and grants debuff abilities for combat. So what can you do? You can demoralize. You can poison. And you can... Blow dust into the faces of anyone occupying the three front-facing hexes, which inflicts drugged. Okay. Has a 50% chance to inflict panicked. Character will behave erratically. 25% chance to inflict frightened. And 
the target gets a status effect hypnotize switches side for one turn holy cow i'm actually does that have a range it doesn't i wonder i have a lot of sense i mean if i'm not currently having a light fracture of my head I can actually go for the witchcraft myself. <laughs> that would be a really creepy thing. Sort of a, um, a guy with a huge Dane axe and uh, witchcraft. Mm, could make good use of this. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, what's your build? Do you have anything else? Do you have anything camp-wise? You can cook, that's good. And you can preserve stuff. Can't do anything else. Repairing, heavy sleeper, guarding, diplomacy, crafting. Adds the ability to craft weapons. I think we need one crafter and one armorer. Scouting, tinker. Unlocks the ability to build new items and throwable or consumable items. Then we... Oh yeah, artisan. Gives the character a chance to add a special property to the items they craft. Requires crafting rank 3. And armor skilling. Requires crafting rank 1. Okay, we've got to build one guy out um, as a crafter. The question is, I don't think these guys gain experience out of combat. Interesting. Well, okay, so you got cooking and you got preserving. That's going to be useful. Anything else? You have evade. Grants 5% points range damage reduction. Okay, that's, I mean, that's kind of useful. You don't get hit quite as often. All right, I take it. I take it. Now let's have a look at him. Um, he has the axe and the Dane axe. I think we're actually going to make him a normal axe guy because I think he actually has two-handed. He has the charge and he yeah, he has the dual wielding, which is kind of nice. He has a strength of 10, which makes him pretty fearful. And he also has six finesse, which gives him a better than average chance for landing critical attacks, I think. Um, he has the interrupt. He does have the golder, so he can do the war cries, which is nice. And he has the tactical movement. Uh, what can he do? He has the guarding, increases the security during camping for one shift. And the repairing, spend less resources repairing damaged items and get more back when deconstructing. Alrighty. Um, you have guarding and repairing. Guarding and scouting. Hunting. Okay. Because we have to pay a little bit more attention now to these camping skills now that we're out in the open. I have no camping skills whatsoever, actually. Um, which could become a problem. Um, I'm kind of um, done with leveling up the Dane Axe. Um, so I could go and do something else. I'd rather improve my Dane Axe ability though. Um, and I've been thinking about, I mean, I'm bad at, at um, perception, but I could still level up the throwing. Throw the stow as a ranged weapon. Um, it has no critical chance, but it, it does apply the Harried. So if I go for this, just the first um, of these abilities, and maybe the second one, toss a friendly or enemy character, and then select the hex adjacent to your own position to throw them into. Um, if I go for that, and then I go for this, the Backstabber grants 50% damage versus Herod enemies. Then I can always pelt them with stones and then um, attack them with the axe. I think that is a pretty nifty combo. Um, this costs 8 points to upgrade. Um, I could also go for the Strider. Grants 1 movement in combat, which is pretty good. Um, there's another one that actually reduces the weight of your, weight of your um, yeah, movement penalty. <clears throat> reduces the movement penalty of armor by minus one to a minimum of zero right that's actually kind of nice i'm gonna i'm gonna think about this whole skilling thing um in between episodes further and then i'm gonna tell you what i decided um after the after the episodes but i think it's kind of interesting to actually um go through this and uh, have a look at the at the guys that we have so now we have a healer and we have a guy that can do a lot in melee. Um, he has the bloodthirsty skill. Increases 10% damage for one turn after every kill. I think we're going to use him with the um, with the two axes. With the double axes. I think that's fine. Um, right. Now. Um, where are we in terms of time? 40 minutes. Okay. We still got, we still got some time left to do things. Um, I'm just going to 
uh, go to Hulda, actually. Go to the witch and see if she can't um, help me. I now have a full herd. I can only bring five people with me, so I guess that's going to be it for now. Um, come on. Gonna go to the bog. Gonna talk to the witch. Witch, 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 witch. Hello. Put garlic up there. That'll cure it. What? I'm not putting garlic up my sheath. Suit yourself. It's the only remedy I know of. How would that even work? I don't know how, you silly goose, but it works every time. But you mean slice or whole? Just peel a clove and shove it up before bed. Careful not to cut into it. Take it out in the morning. The itching ought to stop overnight, otherwise just keep it up until it's fixed. Is there nothing else I could do? Well, you can sit in the snow when it gets bad. That soothes the itching, but the only cure is garlic. <laughs> Alright, I try it. If this keeps up for one more week, I'll crawl out of my own skin. If you taste garlic in the morning, don't worry, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna she's gonna um apply garlic at the area where it um itches. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into any details, but Hulda is actually doing some some fine witching. <laughs> Hello. Hey look, Sal, my dear. Yours is a face I don't see often. Do you need old Hulda's help? Um Some of my herdmen have been injured. Will you treat them? Oh, the poor dears. Of course I'll help. Here, let me see. So we're gonna get treated, I hope. An hour or so later. Let's hope that we actually lost the injuries. Um, there you go. Just let that sit. Time and sleep will take care of the rest. Um, how are you doing today? Oh, my old bones missed the summer, but I get by. Oh, very nice of you to ask, sweetheart. I expect I'll be heading into trouble soon. Can you give me a remedy against wounds? I would suggest if you expect to get wounded where you're going, just don't go. Ah, but I know there's no stopping you young men when your mind is made up. All right, all right. I'll see what I have. The old witch disappears into her burrow. Again, numbing tincture. Disappears briefly into her burrow. When she emerges again, she's holding two small cork jars. Try these, my dear. They'll numb you up, keep you on your feet until you're safe enough to get some real treatment. Um, is there anything you need done around the place? Let's see. We used to grow all sorts of herbs around here. The wet earth was perfect for it. So much for a plant to live on. But nowadays the herbs are gone, and the Rusko has to go far into the forest in search of the right plants. I enjoy it, to be honest, gathering herbs. I like the silence. <laughs> she really is a bit emo. <laughs> I know you do, sweetie, but it takes so long. It would be easier if we could grow our own herbs again. Of course, there's another option. Instead of focusing on matters of the health... We might cater to matters of the spirit. The gods like sacrifice. Those who pay tribute to the spirits and the gods are favored in battle. You might offer the gods more sacrifices out here in the bog. Oxen, horses, people perhaps in due time. <laughs> she's already looking rather creepy, but I think she's a force for good. <laughs> the spirits congregate in this place and they will appreciate such offerings. Be certain of that. Well, I think... Um, if you don't get sacrificed yourself in her bog, um, then I don't think you'll think of her as some force for good. If you're short on herbs right now, perhaps we could gather some. What's that? Is the Thane himself offering to go foraging for me? Things sure have changed since your father was in charge. If you're serious, you can pluck some flowers for me around the village. I'll use them to make you something special for your trouble. I'm short on three different plants. Gonna track that one. I'm short on three different plants, all flowers that bloom year-round. One grows on the beach, one grows near the graves, and the third is usually found near animals. Um, I have some more flowers. Holder looks over your collection of herbs. I'm sorry, my dear, none of this is what I'm looking for. Okay, I'll swing by once in a while, once I've, once I've collected your flowers, okay? 
Um, this will give me a chance to sort of show off the village. Um, it's actually really nicely done, nicely crafted village, very, uh, very believable. So what she told us about the the bog and the herbs um, plantation and stuff leads into what I wanted to show for a while. Just it doesn't make sense to show it now. So we can upgrade our homestead in here. We can either uh, in various um, areas. And we can either go for um, power or for prosperity. Um, power, a measure of your military strength outside the borders of your territory. I'm pretty sure... Oh yeah, that's actually um, giving us a short tutorial. Um, multiple paths. Once you decide, you can never change your mind, which is a bit of a shame. Um, most homestead upgrades provide bonuses to one or the other. Some story decisions will modify these values. Prosperity and your power will eventually influence how the game ends, so choose wisely. Okay, that's interesting. So we're going to get an ending depending on that. Measure of your prestige at home when you're standing among the other chieftains. So I guess this is for fighting in, in England, and this is for um, for the old thing. Okay, and we can upgrade various of these things. We could actually go for the training ring right now. Um, what does that do, though? Gives me two power. Restore the old training ring to its former glory. We could go for a peer. No, we already have that, I think. No, we just don't have the 100 woods. Um, right, so the longhouse can either be built into a meat hall, increase prosperity, or into a stronghold. The thing can build, be built into a folk moot, um, or into a market, which adds prosperity. Oh, 50 valuables weekly. Two prosperity and a new trader, and a new trader, and a new trader. Um, yeah, difficult. And this is the moor. That is what she's been talking about. We can either go for a sacrificial bog um, with plus two prosperity and four rations, or an herbal glade, which gives us two prosperity and four herbs. So, doesn't really make much of a difference. I think herbs might be better than rations. Dedicated to appeasing the spirits and celebrating the gods. Then we can upgrade the blacksmith, um, Quidulfur. We can either make him into an armorer or into a craftsman. Crafts weapons of higher quality. Um, we can upgrade the farms, um, pens and gardens surrounding your village. Um, this takes a while to build. So, and what you can do is you can use the thralls that you have um, to increase the building speed. What I would like to do is definitely upgrade the defenses. Uh, we don't have quite enough wood. I hope that I can scrounge these together. Um, stronger defenses bolster your clan's military might. That's good. Um, these just give us more prosperity again. I wonder why the bonus of that is worse than the bonus of that. I don't get that. <laughs> and then we can get some banners. Just a very cheap and easy way to gain some prosperity can build roads. Uh, we don't have enough uh, wood. I think we can only have one building project going at a time, but yeah, I think these will provide um, bonuses in one form or another. Um, we've got a codex, actually. We can see that our clansmen are 75% to um, liking us. And here's the timeline, which is interesting. So, um, Sun's Day, the 17th of March, year 789, is, I guess, when the game is end, or something else is going to happen. This is the starting day. Freya's Day, the 15th of February, 789. So, during this time, I guess we've got to lead our clan to, um, to fame and riches. It's not a lot of time. I actually would prefer a more open-ended thing, but I guess you can't really do that if you want to tell a story. All right, so that's enough. Let's go, some, let's go and uh, pick some flowers. <laughs> um, and while we're doing this, we're sort of going to talk with the villagers and all. Um, there's Adis. We couldn't could have a talk with Adis um, about the grave and all. Hello! You find Adis next to a farmhouse, holding a headless hen in one hand and a knife in the other. The ground around her is covered in feathers. Ho oh there! What brings you kids out here? Don't tell me Ranvai Sao chose this moment to give birth. I feel like I'm missing some important context here. <laughs> Silly Sao is ready to give birth any day now. Promise Rangweg I'll lend a hand when it happens. Only, I'm in the middle of plucking a hen for dinner. Anyway, what brings you out here, if not the Sao? I want to ask you about one of the stories you told when we were children. Aedis smiles wistfully, brushing a few wayward feathers off her apron. Ah, been so long. Hope I can remember. What do you need to know? You told us of a gravesite in a hill once, where an ancient king was buried with all his treasure. You recognized the gleam in Ada's eyes from your childhood. That story, yes. 
They said the tomb was protected by dwarves or elves or other such underground creatures. That horrible vengeance would befall any who dared to breach its sanctity. Hmm, do you know if the tomb is real? Seen it myself. Traveled through there with Alvalder when we had just been married on our way here to start our family. Spent a night in a small hamlet at the base of the hill, where I heard of the treasure and the creatures that protect it. Why are you asking about this now? I'm preparing an expedition. I need treasure that I can trade for supplies. Adis looks intrigued. Where goes the journey? The isle across the sea. The stories tell of unprotected coasts and great riches. I now have additional questions. The woman finally puts down the chicken. She wipes her hands on her apron. Tell you what. Let me come with you to the grave. Be easy if, if I simply show you the way. What about your sons, though? They're old enough to look after the farm in my absence, and they've got their aunt and granduncle to help them if there's trouble. Do you know how to defend yourself? I have little training, if that's what you mean, but I'm no frail old lady. Alvaldo left a helmet and a shield for his sons, but they fit me just as well. We'll bring an axe. Think that'll cover it. Um... Hmm. I'm gonna take her. Why not? If you wish to join, you're welcome. Hello. Great. Meet you at the edge of the village when it's time to leave. For now, really must finish this hen. Alright. Skirning her. Revealed on the map. So, yeah, I definitely want to do that with the grave. Can we go inside? Yeah, we can actually. Um, should we? I guess we might as well. So, let's just go inside and maybe plunder anything that we find inside. There's Torvaldr Alvaldrson. Torkel said he'd be out training with the kids. If you have time, I'm sure they could all learn a lot from you. Um, you can actually do that. You can do sort of a, a mock-up fight with the, with the children, which is kind of fun. I think we're going to do that, maybe. All right. Oh, and did I actually leave my... Yeah, take all. Did I leave my wounds? Uh, lose my wounds? Yes, I did. Uh, my movement is still a bit reduced. Um, let's go for this. This one is empty. We're getting some scraps. We're getting some herbs. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do a little bit of looting. I just move outside again. It always takes a little bit um, to load the outside, but not as long. So I think I'm fine with this. Let's just save it. Um, anything else that we can do around here? Uh, we gotta pick those. We gotta pick those flowers as well. Um, nothing that I really see. I'm clicking for the highlight all interactable objects. Um, I don't really want to go for the for the practice fight right now because it's actually going to take a little while, um, that fight. So I'm going to do that in the next episode, I think. For now, I'm just going to try to to pick those flowers. Um, could actually have a look at the map. So and we've got the burial site. It's not being shown on the map, which is fine. Um... Some flowers from the graves, um, some flowers from near the animal pen, which is up here, and some flowers from the beach. I think that's over here. So let's just move around, have a look. So this is the one entrance into Skern. Um, we've got all these um, that we can plunder. Oh yeah, some wood. Nice. Definitely want to start with the upgrading. I definitely would like to at least leave um, the village a little bit better protected behind than uh, when we started out. Rungbok. Golden Dark Thorgrim. Welcome. Hello. Um, let's plunder these. Hello. Let's take some tar. Let's take that uh, that as well. Um, hello. I think this is where we're going to build the folk mood or the market, depending on what happens. An unfinished rune stone with only a few grooves um, carved to contain words. Um, can't plunder this for some reason. Well, I guess I live with it. Those filthy beasts attacking us out of nowhere like that. Well. Tell you what, we're going to do that to the um, people in England. <laughs> um, save it. Oh yeah, that's Torfin. Hello. Hello, Torfin. Um, let's talk with you. Torfin is in his shop, teaching one of the boys of the village the proper use of an ads. They appear to be working on an oar. As you enter the workshop, he holds up a hand in greeting. This might be my favorite character in the game. He just looks so funny. <laughs> Um, like he's laughing about some really funny joke or smirking or something. He holds up a hand in greeting. Good work, kid. Just keep at it like that until this side is done. 
I have to talk to the Thane, but I'll be right back. Stretches his back and comes over to shake your hand with a wide smile. I believe you and your friends to thank. I have you and your friends to thank for returning my wife's jewelry. What can I do to repay this debt of gratitude? What are you working on? Ugh, I have a lot of work now fixing and replacing all the things that were broken or stolen in the raid. Right now I'm showing little Magningbjörn how to make a new oar for his father. After the old man broke it across the back of a raider. Ha! Huh. Did we suffer a lot of damage? Aye, it seems like those bastards managed to start a lot of fires and kick in quite a lot of doors. Quildulfer is working on some replacement locks, so I'll be busy installing new doors when he's done. I'm sure you're not just here to check up on the repair work though, are you? I'm mounting an expedition and I need a new longship. He claps his hands together and flashes you a wide grin. Oh ho! Oh, my dear man, I've been waiting for you to come to me with this task since your father's ship went with him into the afterlife. My master built that ship when I was just a young boy. I've always dreamt of completing such a project myself. That was a glorious vessel in its day. Fast and durable. But I think I can build on that design and surpass my old master. What type of ship will, ship will you make? It'll be a snake yeah, like your father's ship. A thin warship with a shadow, shallow keel. I'll put in two dozen rowing benches so there's room for both your herd and some thralls. Mm. Yeah, it would be a raider. <laughs> I'm not going to have a trading vessel, I don't think. What do you need? Well, timber first and foremost. You'll need to choose a tree that I will use to form the keel, the stem and the hull. Our nearby forest has several grand old trees that would each make for a fine ship. If you want me to undertake this project, I will meet you in the forest and help you choose a suitable tree. If I start immediately, I should be able to have your ship ready by the late spring. What kind of woods are you looking for? The carpenter strokes his beard. Let's see. Oak is the most common. It is a heavy and durable timber that will make for an intimidating vessel. Elm is a little lighter and more flexible, could be used to make a slightly broader ship to haul a lot of cargo. Or perhaps spruce would be a good choice. It's a lighter material that would produce a fast ship. I will pick particular types of lumber for the different parts of the ship to ensure that every component is made with the best possible wood but the principal material will have a great influence on the qualities of the finished vessel. Anything else? We'll need sail soon. I'll ask Dag Heider and her girls um, to see what they can do. I need some new tools. My master's tool set is worn by age and shamefully outdated. Torfin's attention seems to slip off into the distance. Her husband Quildulfur should be happy to help me with that. I'll need to produce a steering oar, some sort of anchor. He notices your apprehensive look at his growing list of errands. Oh, this is nothing you need to worry about. I'll make all the arrangements. Um, this all sounds good. Can't wait to see what you can do. Meet me in the forest near your uncle's house when you have time, and we'll pick out some timber and get started. Okay. So that was that was kind of interesting. I think I'm gonna end the episode here. We got our work cut out for us. Oh, and we have Sigurdr. All right, then we're going to talk with you before we end the episode then. Walks up to us at a brisk pace and stops abruptly at a respectful distance. Thogrim, I found something you may need to deal with. What's going on? As she spends most of her days roaming the countryside, Sigurd tends to know what hap what's happening in your lands better than anyone else. I've come across a group of travelers camping out in the forest. I can't tell if they armed, so I thought I'd better stay clear for now. How many are they? I saw four in the camp, but there was too much baggage for just the four of them. I think there must be six or seven. What colors do they wear? All sorts. Nothing that identifies them as a fighting unit. Um, we ought to deal with this at once. Um, a lot of stuff for us to deal with in the forest. Sigurd lets out a shallow breath she seems to have held in for a while, which condenses in the cold into a wispy cloud between you. Lotor and I will keep an eye on them until you get there. Sigurd is shed checks the knife in her belt as she turns on the spot and strides away towards the forest. 
So, um, unknown men are, are skulking through our forest. That's kind of uh, nasty. We're definitely going to deal with them in the next episode. Um, we will also go do the whole flower thing, um, meet the rest of the villagers, and then we'll, we'll move off into the forest. Um, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you didn't, tell me why in the comments so I can improve. And if you want to see more of the series in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. I um, hope you join me next time for um, more Expeditions Viking. Bye-bye.